Chicago Cubs baseball on ABC7. Another nice day here at the ballpark, and the Cubs are streaking. They've won eight of their last nine, and happy birthday to the two-time All-Star Anthony Rizzo as he turns 26 today. Cubs baseball on ABC7 as they host the defending world champion, San Francisco Giants. Great to have you with us. Along with Jim Deshays, I'm Len Casper. Game three of four, the Cubs have taken the first two, and we're going to get right into the Cadillac pitching matchup. A couple of right-handers today. Yeah, Kyle Hendricks goes for the Cubs. Matt Cain will pitch for the Giants here this afternoon. Cain spent a bunch of time on the DL. He's made just six starts since coming back in his career against the Cubs, 6-2 and two with a 238, but he has not faced Chicago since 2013, so a lot of new faces for Cain to contend with here today. Uh, Kyle Hendricks has been on a very nice roll. Last seven games, a 225 earned run average. Facing the Giants for the first time ever in in his career, the Cubs a 5-4 winner on Thursday, 7-3. The final yesterday, a game and a half lead on the Giants for the second wild card spot. We'll have game three of this set coming up next. Located on the web at MBUSA.com. By DeVry University, different on purpose. By American Family Insurance, insure carefully, dream fearlessly. By Chrysler, enjoy your summer in style with great deals at the Chrysler Summer Clearance Event. And by Southwest Airlines, book your low fare now at Southwest.com. This high definition broadcast is brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Let's take a look at the Mercedes keys to the game. Uh, Matt Kane, the veteran right hander, has really struggled against left handed pitching so far this year. They're hitting 352 against them, so we'll focus a little bit on that. Unknown entities, the uh, Giants. Uh, this is Kyle Hendricks' first ever start against them. Nobody in their lineup has ever faced the young right hander. Giants uh, lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Pagan Aoki, who homered yesterday. Matt Duffy putting together a fine rookie campaign. Buster Posey, one of the best players in baseball. Hunter Pence is in right. Brandon Belt at first. It's Brandon Crawford, the shortstop. A. Ray Adrianza, switch hitting second baseman, hitting eighth. And Matt Kane, ninth. 
Cubs defensively brought to you by Toyota. Schwarber, Fowler, Solaire, left center, right. Bryant, Russell, Coglin, Rizzo on the infield. Montero behind the plate. And it's going to be interesting today. Uh, Chris Coglin had a couple chances yesterday, had no issues. But uh, Kyle Hendricks, an extreme ground ball pitcher. So it should be, a, could be a busy day for Chris out there today. And away we go. As Hendricks faces this Giants lineup for the first time. 22nd start of the season. That's a strike. It's one and one. Last time out, seven innings of four hit, one run ball in Milwaukee against the Brewers. He's allowed one or zero earned runs in five of his last seven starts. First pitch weather brought to you by Four Seasons Heating, Air Conditioning, and Plumbing for all the right reasons. Call 866 Four Seasons, 73 degrees. And the wind is blowing in. Overcast skies. Call strike three. Lights are on as we get started here just after three o'clock. And a good start for Kyle Hendricks. Two seam fastball, top of the zone to get Pagan. Field and Colbert, the crew chief, made the call. Jim Reynolds is at first, Manny Gonzalez at second, and Paul Schreiber's over at third. Norichka Aoki, the left fielder. Drastic home road splits for Aoki. His OPS under 600 at AT&T Park. It's 924 on the road. And he takes a strike. He homered. In the ball game yesterday. Did not hold up. Nothing in two. He's off Tommy Hunter. It doesn't do a lot of that, but every now and then he'll get into one. A couple years ago with the Brewers, he hit 10. More, more likely to see that from Maioki out on that front foot, slapping it the other way, slashing it on the ground, trying to use the speed. That's interesting. Uh, ballpark in San Francisco, you can see where it would keep the power numbers down, but it shouldn't have a negative influence on batting average. Popped him up. Rizzo drops it. It'll be an error on Anthony Rizzo as Montero gave way. Rizzo, you could probably hear on a crowd microphone screaming, I got it. Yeah, and uh, usually that, that's the play. Let, let the first baseman get it. Should be an easier play for him with the first baseman's met as opposed as opposed to the catcher's glove. So he did everything right except for catch the ball. will try to work around the error. Now, Matt Duffy, nine game hitting streak. He leads all National League, <clears throat> National League rookies, pardon me, with a 310 batting average. And as Hendricks will check on Aoki. The Giants steal a lot of bases, but I would think Bruce Bochy would be inclined to. Starts and runners here today with Hendricks on the mound and his ground ball tendencies. And Strike one. A lot of their hitters are ground ball type guys too. Hit the ball on the ground. Now this team, in terms of ground ball rate, if you're into such things, third highest in the National League. There's a double play chance. Russell, Coughlin, Rizzo. They work around the error. Listen to this crowd, man. They are jacked. They are into it early. Cubs coming up.
Southwest Airlines. Fowler, Schwarber, and Coughlin at the top. Anthony Rizzo again on his 26th birthday. will hit in the cleanup spot. Bryant, Soler, and Montero back from the DL ahead of Kyle Hendricks, the pitcher, and Addison Russell, the shortstop. Nissan brings you the Giants defense here. Aoki Pagan Pence left center right. Duffy Crawford Adrianza belt on the infield. The Buster Posey behind the plate and uh, Matt Keen working for the Giants here this afternoon. Right hander, 30 years of age. Missed a whole bunch of time with the uh, elbow issue. So two and two with a 491 through six starts. He's given up a lot of damage. Are they hitting 303 against him. His first pitch is a fastball for a strike on Dexter Fowler. Kane had been a very durable guy, but the last three years he's had at least one DL stint. Right forearm in 2013. Three different times on the DL last year did not pitch in the postseason. And you mentioned the forearm flexor strain this year. One ball and two strikes. Giants can hit. They've got a veteran bullpen. The key to their final two months here, and if they can get into the postseason, JD's probably everybody behind Madison Bumgarner. Yeah, going to try to cobble together a successful uh, starting rotation. Uh, guys with really good resumes, but. And some veteran guys, older guys. A guy like Kane coming back from an injury. One and two on Fowler. Big day for him yesterday. Three hits, including a home run as he rolls over and bounces out to belt. Kane, a four pitch mix, fastball, slider, curve, and a change. Two seamer with a little sinking action. He'll also elevate with a four seam fastball. With his childhood between Alabama and Tennessee, family moved to Memphis when he was 10. Here's Kyle Schwarber. Five games here to start August. Eight hits, two doubles, three homers, two walks, hit by a pitch. Key stolen base yesterday. He's knocked in eight and scored nine runs in these five games. And he has simply forced his way into the lineup, playing left field here these last two days. The Vry University League leaders. Small sample size. Schwarber right in the mix here to start August. And as he gets hit by Kane. And reaches base again. He's trying to crowd him with a slider and crowd him. He did. He drilled him. Yesterday, Bang went off the base of the wall for two bases. It went through the second baseman. And just continues to impress. And the guy swinging as well as he is. The last thing you want to do is leave a breaking ball in, a, in his happy zone. So Kane overthrows that one a little bit. Cubs have scored first inning runs in the first two games of this series and four of their last five. Outside on Chris Coughlin on a double play work with Addison Russell during batting practice. And it paid off on a 6 4 3 turn to end the Giants' threat in the first. Chris Swent, that's a strike. I suppose the analogy is like riding a bike because Coughlin played a ton of second base in the minor leagues, but not regularly in many, many years. One, one on the ground in the left. Two on for Rizzo. I'm obligated to say, nice piece of hitting. First baseman, but it certainly was. 24, Anthony Rizzo. Rizzo's last nine games, five homers, 12 knocked in.
Crawford plays almost behind second base. Here's a pitch. It's outside for ball one. Anthony probably got to the ballpark today, looked up at the flags and said, really? Not even on my birthday? Can't the wind blow out? Fifty fourth game the wind at game time blowing in for the thirty fifth time. Ball two. Kane six three two thirty. Kind of hard to believe his career record 97 and 97. He had some tough luck years when the Giants didn't give him any run support. He's firing with the changeup, and now he's got to make a pitch here 3 0 on Anthony Rizzo. Break even record 342 ERA. Got a perfect game on his resume June of 2012 against the Astros. And one. Oh, 07 08, early in Kane's career. He made 66 starts those two seasons, put up a 371 earned run average. Well, better than average, what the league was doing at the time. He went 15 and 30. So that tells you all you need to know about the win stat. Outside, and they're loaded for Chris Bryant. Three different ways they've reached hit batter single walk. Well, the damage has been a theme here in this series. What a chance for Chris Bryant. Playing in his 100th major league contest. Swing and a miss. That's the thing about Matt Kane. You get a lot of off speed on that first pitch. One one. At least 30 starts every year between 2006 and 2013. Surgery last year, he only made 15 starts. To count on him for 200 innings or so each and every year. Kane has the sign from Posey. Here's the 1 1. What a play by Crawford, and they only get one, and the Cubs grab the lead. Crawford on that short hop pick, they get the out at second, but Chris Bryant runs well for a big man and was hustling, and they avoid the double play. And we've talked about it all season long that Chris Bryant is more than a slugger, very good athlete, and his speed a difference maker here. Heck of a play by Brandon Crawford out there at shortstop. The Cubs again draw first blood. Brian will get an RBI out of it. His 62nd. And they're at the corners with Jorge Soler digging in. First two games of this series, the Giants have only gotten eight innings from their starters combined and eight from their bullpen. A couple of very short stints by their starting pitchers. So Bruce Bochy hoping Matt Kane can give them more today as Soler grounds into the fielder's choice. 19 pitch first inning for Kane, and the Cubs get a run. It's one nothing Cubs after an inning.
Offense wants to keep Schwarber in the lineup. Montero is back now. Coglin moving around uh, defensively. That means Starlin Castro out of the lineup the last two days. More on that situation with Jesse Rogers. Hey, Jesse. Yeah, Len JD, as you guys know, manager Joe Madden informed Castro yesterday he wouldn't necessarily be the everyday shortstop going forward. Castro's taking a team first approach about it. You know, I feel, feel a little frustrated. You know, feel a little frustrated, especially yesterday when they tell me. They're not gonna play. I'm not gonna play for. I don't know where, when, you know. But in the, in the beginning, I take it like really personal. But after that, I think about it. And, you know, if he's, you can you can put those guys in the bench. You know, they they really hot right now, and I understand. And that's why I think about it last night all night and the, whatever whatever can do for the team. Was, that was Castro today talking to reporters. And Joe Madden's desire today was to make sure Castro was ready on a moment's notice because you know how things can change at any time in this game. Back to you, Lenny J.D. Thank you, Jesse. So a bat off the bench, which is definitely not something he's used to. Kyle Hendricks robbing Buster Posey on a broken bat. The barrel ended up all the way out to where Addison Russell was positioned. Uh, that, wow. that, that's a happy pitch for Hendricks right there. You got a MVP candidate, one of the best players in the game. You get him out, you break his toys, you send him back to the dugout. Shame-faced and humiliated. A complete win for Kyle Hendricks. <laughs> That'll bring up Hunter Pence. Got a good series, three for six. He's added a couple of walks. He's just trying to finish the season healthy. He's spent 66 games over two DL stints out of their lineup. This is only his 44th game. He played in 162 each of the last two years. He had been incredibly durable. 383 consecutive games played before starting this year on the shelf. Yeah, and that's a guy who doesn't play uh, cautiously either. I mean, he's. He'd be pretty reckless out there on the bases and in the field, throwing his body around. And you're right, he has been, for the most part, remarkably durable over the years. This is a fun confrontation because uh, Hendricks is a change of speeds guy and Hunter Pence is a one speed guy. Three one, sinker catches the outside, three and two. Montero catching today. Kyle Schwarber in left. David Ross. Ooh. That just missed outside for ball four. David Ross has been put on the bereavement list. Our condolences to David and his family. His grandmother has passed away. And that looked like strike three. Yep, that's a great pitch. So Matt Caesar is back for the sixth time. And available off the bench. And we expect David Ross to be back probably on Tuesday to start the Brewers series. Now back by Brandon Belt. Hence it first, one out, 0 2 on the Giants' first baseman. Pitch, 1 and 2. Kyle's made nine starts here at Wrigley. He's pitched well, a 323 ERA here, but just one win to show for it. High deep drive to right. Soler is back. He's on the warning track. And it's in the basket, a home run. Brandon Belt with a two-run shot. And it looked like Jorge took a big chunk out of the Ivy as he just ran out of room. 
Yeah, ball hit that high in a day like today. Thought maybe the wind would knock it down, but he had enough of it to just get it out of here. Second home run of the series for Brandon Belt, his 15th on the year. That's where that walk really hurts. Hendricks thought he had Pence yep. on strike three. It's one thing to give up a homer, but you hate to give up multiple runs on one swing. So 2 1 San Francisco. Giants have a very deep balanced lineup. Uh, you know they're good when you got the likes of Belt and Crawford hitting sixth and seventh against a right handed pitcher. It's one thing to have them down in the order against a lefty. Two dangerous left handed bats towards the uh, you know, lower third of the order against a right handed pitcher. Speaks to the depth of their uh, their lineup. The team scores a lot of runs. As we know about the baskets here. The Toyota home run cam. You can't really take away a home run unless you can jump about your verticals about what 48 inches. It looked like Solaire at least had gotten close to it. With the basket. And unless you want to start a home run climbing the vines and latching onto that basket and repelling that you know <laughs> it's not going to happen. The three one on Crawford and he bounces foul. Twelfth home run allowed by Hendricks this season. Coglin will backhand it. And safe. Crawford beats it out. Chris kind of went back and actually ended up on the outfield grass. Uh, just took too much time, so that's a hit for Crawford. Yeah, I mean, and that's uh, Ooh, uh, certainly been out. one of the storylines here, the ground ball tendencies. And Chris, although he has played a lot of second base in the past, has not played a lot. Lately, so just the timing of plays and, and getting a feel for that, you know, that inner baseball clock. And it's going to take some time, and the Cubs are taking some time, and they want to take another look at this one. I think he's out, and Joe will challenge. Yeah, it looked like that ball disappeared just before Crawford got to the base. We should start a new feature where, where people could vote what they think the uh, results of the review will be. That did not take long. So Joel keeps his challenge. And that's the second out of the inning. Like I was saying, Chris Coglin's baseball clock is so tuned in right now <laughs> that he knows exactly right. how much time he has before making that play. Well, that is the kind of play, you know, next time he'll play it a little differently. But yeah, that internal clock, you just, you got to play. You yeah, gotta, it's just going to take, take reps. Yep. yep. Schwarber gets Adrianza inning over. 2 1 Giants on the homer by Belt.
Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Folks, uh, don't forget to check out the Cubs blog at abc7chicago.com. Brought to you by Jeff Vukovic, your local nationwide agent, serving the area for 37 years. To join the nation, contact Jeff at jeffvuk.com. Nationwide is on your side. Miguel Montero takes a breaking ball for a strike from Matt Kane, who's now working with a one run lead. Miguel's first action in almost a month since July 11th, sprained left thumb, put him on the DL. Four game rehab stint with Double A Tennessee before his return. He's faced Kane a lot. Going back to his Diamondback days, 54 at bats. And just a 204 average with two home runs. Puts this ball well the other way. It takes off, and Aoki able to backpedal and make the grab. No good swing. Yeah, we talked out. about the the lefties and the damage they've done against Kane so far this year, and already today Schwarber hit by a pitch, Coglin base hit, Rizzo walked, Montero hits a bullet. Hendricks three out of 42. And a foul strike. One game already has gone final. The Blue Jays shut out the Yankees in New York six to nothing. David Price seven shutout innings. Beat Ivan Nova. Picked up like five and a half games in the standings on the Yankees since the Troy Tulowitzki deal. I believe 10 and 0 with Tulowitzki in the lineup. Ball strike three. Tulowitzki homered today. Time for the Volkswagen defensive plays. And we're going to go back to two excellent plays at second base by shortstop Addison Russell yesterday. Yeah, just spectacular. The throw offline, and not only to catch the ball, but to have the, uh, the ability, the agility to apply the tag. And again, here, an errant throw from John Lester. He goes to his knees to start the double play. We call that agility. Just combine those two words. Serious agility. Yeah, so uh, Toronto two and a half out. They have won seven in a row. That's a fair ball. It's going to roll into the corner. Russell on his way to second. Aoki still hasn't picked up the ball, and Addison's going to stay with two. Already in scoring position with two outs. Yeah, wise decision. Um, probably 50 50 that he makes third base there, but with two outs, not worth it. Swung the bat well yesterday, had just one hit, but had good at bats, lined out another time. Fowler, who came in with a 21 game on base streak, 0 for 1. Astros and A's just underway in Oakland. Two runs in the first for the A's off Colin McHugh. And it's 2 0 in the second. Huh. Ball appeared to be outside. One and one. Change up such an important pitch for Kane if he's going to try to turn these numbers around against left handed hitters.
goes back to that, that story I told you I read in Fangraphs or wherever it was a while back about Dexter Fowler. I was among the league leaders and called strikes outside of the zone. I don't know what that's all about, but especially for a guy who has a good eye at the plate. He should be rewarded for that. Yeah. I wonder if it has anything to do with the fact that he's tall. So yeah, that he's, and maybe that he's a switch hitter, so he never faces the same sided arm. You know, the umpire's mm -hmm. perspective, maybe. I don't know. Well, he has, over the last 30 days, swung at the lowest percentage of two strike pitches of any hitter in baseball. So he is seeing the ball well. He has taken his walks. And clearly, the scouting report on him has been. That he will chase, and I think he did right before the break, but that has changed. And now he's more likely to get rung up taking a call third strike than, than chase one out of the zone. And he just got a hit, so Kane has hit Schwarber and Fowler. Sure where this one got him. Let's see. At both times, either slider or a cut fastball. That's kind of like the one the Rizzo got. Right knee. Yeah. Fun to play with the numbers. Uh, Kyle Schwarber. Does not have enough at bats obviously to qualify among the league leaders, but if you filter it for 70 plate appearances, he would have the second best OPS in the game. Lined to belt to end the inning. Struck well, but what else is new when it comes to Kyle Schwarber? Still 2 1 Giants. Seven is brought to you by Mercedes Benz. Check out our exciting model lineup by visiting your local authorized Mercedes Benz dealer or visit us today at MBUSA.com. Matt Kane takes a strike from Kyle Hendricks. Kane can swing it a little bit, does not have a uh, a high career average. Is well, that was quick. 
We'll get into that next time. <laughs> Forget it. Sorry, Matt. Goodbye, Matt. Uh, Cub fans, we've hit the stretch run. Come out and enjoy a great weather in this beautiful ballpark. Giants are here again tomorrow afternoon. And then a three-game set with the Brewers starts Tuesday night. Tickets are still available, so visit Cubs.com. Angel Pagan, former Cub, caught looking to lead off the game. One out of nine in the series. He swings away and lofts one towards Schwarber, moving near the line. He's got it. Kyle looks like a quick study out there. He's not had too many challenging plays, but he's he's made all of them. Yeah, yeah, he looks comfortable. Two quick outs. It's Aoki. A lot of times with outfield play, it's what you do after you have the ball in your hands that really makes a difference. Tommy Hendricks, the old Yankee, old reliable, they called him. He said, catching a fly ball is a pleasure. So what you do afterwards is a man's business. Ooh. Dodgers and Pirates just underway. Each team with a run in the first. Latos and Liriano matching up. Pirates, a winner last night, five to four in ten. And a Pedro Alvarez bases loaded single. Yeah, about six more runs were scored in that game than uh, I anticipated with Cole and Kershaw making the start. Montero's timing back from the DL. Good in that he has seen these Giants a lot over the years. Working knowledge of their lineup. Two two on Aoki Duffy on deck. Hendricks gave up the two run homer to belt in the second as the Giants grabbed the lead. The uh, tough guy to strike out. Fooled him with a changeup earlier that time. He was wise to it and was able to lay off. Just inside. Second walk, and both walks have been on really close yeah, pitches, and, and both could have been, been strikes. And that's the thing about Hendricks playing. He, he really knows how to execute. So they go away, away, away. They go soft. Then he throws that two seamer, makes a perfect pitch. And doesn't get rewarded. Okay, fake. Towards second. Duffy takes a strike. See, that's what I was talking about. The, the, the Fowler strike call on the same side. Every pitch has a purpose. Rarely will he leave. Especially a fastball over the heart of the plate. Picked off two this year. Aoki's 12 out of 17 in the stolen base department.
Two and one on Duffy. As we mentioned earlier, the Giants tried to replace Pablo Sandoval with Casey McGee. McGee got off to a really slow start, and eventually Duffy took over third. He was a utility guy to begin the season. Huge energetic audience here at Wrigley Field. It's been a fun weekend. And another full count, three and two. The Cubs have not beaten the Giants in a series at Wrigley Field since 2008. In the last seven tries, they've lost four and split three. They will win today or tomorrow. And they will get a series win. Hunter goes on the 3 2. Fly ball to right. And Solaire will come in to end the inning. We go to the bottom of the third. Giants 2, Cubs 1. Brought to you by the Bob LaCorsio Auto Group. You're going to like buying a car this way. Kane ready to work against Coglin, Rizzo, and Bryant. 2 1 San Francisco and a strike called and a changeup. Solid line drive to single last time for Chris. His best year in the power department with 11 home runs. On the ground, that pitch actually was up. And Duffy will get Coglin. Let's take a look at the uh, National League wild card standings brought to you by the Bob LoCorsio Auto Group. So the Cubs three and a half games behind the Pirates, a game and a half better than the Giants. 60 and 48 now. The Cubs have played exactly two thirds of their schedule. And if they continue to play at this pace the rest of the way, they'll win 90 ball games. And normally that would be good enough to get you in. Chrysler scoreboard. Second inning now. Dodgers, uh, Pirates, 1 1. And Slyke and McCutcheon with the RBIs in that one. 
Pop foul and back out of play. So Kane with first pitch changeups to both Coglin and Rizzo. And as I mentioned earlier, he he likes to go off speed on that first pitch. You often hear about hitters sitting first ball fastball. Are there guys who sit on first pitch changeups? No, I don't think so. You know, maybe a guy who's seen a pitcher knows his uh, approach. I mean, with, with all the information they have now, if if uh, John Maley goes to one of his hitters, you know, especially a guy like Rizzo, say, "Hey, look, uh, you know, he throws first pitch changeup to 65 percent of the time. You might want to sit on one in any given at bat." Top foul the other way. Funny thing about that though is I think a lot of guys if they sit off speed that first pitch and then they get blown away by a fastball it, it feels embarrassing right? or they take a cookie right there that they could have they know they could have done some damage on yeah but that's that's part of it I mean hitters they talk about whether you guess or not most hitters let's say they play hunches it's, it's a percentage game on ball other way and that'll be a base hit so Duffy couldn't get it Crawford deflects it in the left center. And he's on for the second time today. A shift buster. His straight hands. If, uh, if Duffy doesn't get a piece of it, Crawford probably feels it cleanly, but I don't think he's going to throw Anthony out. Actually, Duffy deflected it, not Crawford. But here's Bryant. Fielder's choice ground ball beat out a double play to knock in the Cubs' run in the opening inning. And, you know, some old school people say, well, you, you can't throw first pitch changeup because you're not changing off of anything. You have to show the guy the fastball first, then throw the changeup. I don't buy that, <laughs> especially as you get deeper into the game. And the, the advantage, I think, if you have command of that first pitch changeup, the hitter's looking fastball. He might recognize breaking ball spin and be able to lay off that pitch changeup. A good one, a little tougher for that hitter to recognize. Behind first foul territory belt over near the tarp and it looked like that ball hit the heel of his glove. So no play. It's a foul strike. And he was uh, trying to find his positioning there. He's not even looking at the ball at the end. He's looking at the tarp the wall. The lady with the beer. Anything but the baseball and you. Can't really fault him. There's a whole lot going on over there. Basketball has the no look pass. Belt was going for the no look catch. Two strikes on Bryant. And count holds. A fun month this season series all seven games here in August four here three in San Francisco at the end of the month and the final Western trip for the Cubs San Francisco and LA at least in the regular season Bryant high and deep way back Lead three to two. And Chris Bryant has driven in all three. His speed last time enabled him to beat out a double play, allowing a run to score. This time it's the power. And boy, does he get through this one. Our Toyota home run cam, a picture perfect swing of the bat by Chris Bryant. Oh my. A no doubter. Well, the Cubs now leading for the second time.
John Neely has been working with Chris with, in his posture and his swing trying to. Not dip that back shoulder quite as much you know, trying to stay through the ball focusing on the middle of the diamond alley to alley. And he has to be pleased with that result great swing. Now Matt Kane has given up more hard contact this year than at any point in his career opponents line drive percentage. Thirty two percent way above what we would normally see against him. Elbow, elbow surgery last year. They said he couldn't even straighten his arm. And uh, he was scratched right before his first start of the year, and then put on the DL with that flexor tendon. And <laughs> the irony is, he, he finally was able to stretch his arm, but in so doing, inflicted some damage. Um, just 30 years of age, but he's pitched a lot of major league innings. And one of that pitch did not get the call on the outside. So it's three and two on Solaire. Here it comes. He walked him. Well, we've seen an improved approach from Solaire lately, too. A little more patient, not chasing that breaking ball as much. Here comes Dave Rigetti, the Giants' longtime pitching coach. Away, 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 away. And so there takes the walk. So Kane through that perfect game. June of 2012. Since then he's made 70 starts. 20 up, 22 down with a 3.90 earned run average. Punched out 14 Astros. And uh, Gregor Polanco made an unbelievable play in the outfield. But other than that, there weren't a lot of near misses. All one on Montero. On the count. Three RBIs so far it propelled Chris Bryant into the team lead with 64 knocked in. One ahead of Anthony Rizzo. So there's been five perfect games in the in the 2010s. Incredible. I guess. Part of the explanation would be the high strikeout rate, right? Balls aren't being put in play. Three and one. Montero trailing only McCann and Posey for RBI among catchers since 2012. Looking to do some damage here on three and one. And get a chance. Back to back walks after the home run. As I said before, they got four innings apiece from their starters on Thursday and Friday, so you might not see early bullpen action like you uh, normally would. Corner men in, expecting Hendricks to try to bunt. And he squares early. 
Posey will fire to third. Relay to first. Double play. Wow. Two to five to four to end the inning. Chris Bryant, two run homer, his first in 11 games, and the Cubs have the lead three to two. is brought to you by DeVry University. Different on purpose. Hey, hey! Chris Bryant, how about this note? Matt Cain has allowed 171 career homers. It is the fourth time he's given up one on an 0-2 pitch. And you see the double play. A 2-5-4 turn by the Giants. Adrian's is standing on top of the bag and he or Hendricks could have come out of that with a Twisted ankle. And the irony is Joe Madden bunting there probably to stay out of a double play. Kyle did not get down a good bunt. And Posey's very athletic back there, but that could prove to be a huge play in this game. They had Kane on the ropes. 1 0 on Posey. And it's a strike. It's 1 and 1. Pence and belt. Sounds like pants and belt. Put shoes Pittman on that team. Oh, I'm grinding right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, too bad they're not on the play for the Sox. <laughs> two and two. Well, yeah, he's gotten some run support here lately. And that long stretch. Very little run support. Called strike three to get Posey. Kyle has left six starts with the lead. And has been dealt with a no decision. 21 starts. He's had 10 decisions so far. Time he gets the benefit of the doubt on the borderline call. So it looks like maybe Colbert. Pitcher friendly up and down but not in and out. One and zero on Pence. Giants have dropped uh, four of six. They're three and five on this ten-game road trip, and that'll get through the hole and in the left for their second hit. 
First hit was a belt home run and here he comes for the second time. A home run followed up Hunter Pence walk in the second inning on the 3 2 pitch that was on the corner. Belt hit his home run into the basket out in right. A rare miss by Hendricks. You see, they were trying to go away with that pitch. Left the middle in. Belt home run in game one of the series to left. Two steals for Hunter Penn so far this year. He spent a bunch of time on the disabled list, so he hasn't played that many games. Stole 22 a couple of years ago. That's a career best. Ricks gets the sign Montero toward the outside and the throw will go over to first. Probably won't see Hector on dome today. We got the final five outs. Pick up the save yesterday. One two swing and a miss on a change you got him. A little revenge for Hendricks. Talked a lot about how he can manipulate that changeup to make it cut or fade. This one's the ladder down and away from Belt. The UCLA product, Brandon Crawford. Grand Slam has been a big part of the Brandon Crawford story. He hit one in his major league debut in Milwaukee. 2011 made the jump from double A to the big leagues. Had the game turning Grand Slam in the wild card game at Pittsburgh last year. Some three career. In the regular season and one off a former foe and now current teammate Mike Leak. It was earlier this season. Deep left trouble off the wall. Pence is going to score to tie the ball game on a double by Crawford. Brandon Crawford. And it's 3 3. Now Crawford showing some pretty good opposite field power here. This pitch is out away from him, but up. It's a good swing on it. For a minute, like it might leave the ballpark. Pretty well played out there by Kyle Schwarber, but. Pence with two outs on the move with the swing, and we're tied. Andrianja, the second baseman. First 
Four knocked in now by Crawford in the series. Every homer, every RBI he picks up since a new career high. 71st run knocked in. Yeah, this might be the toughest lineup that Kyle has pitched against this year. It might be the toughest lineup just about anybody's pitched against this year. When, you know, they got a lot of firepower and, and you know the, the good balance left and right. Well, what's interesting about the, the lineups we've seen this weekend, JD, is that the guys you worry about the most are not right at the top. It's middle toward the lower part of the lineup. Yeah. Boy, that belt and, and Crawford lurking in the six and seven spots. And they've done a lot of damage on the road. That ball hit well. Solaire, though, is right there. He barely had to move. Adrianza lines out. Crawford with an opposite field RBI double has tied the game at three. Witness News in the morning, weekdays 4.30 to 7 a.m. with Judy Sue and Terrell Brown. The classic seesaw affair here at Wrigley Field. Cubs have led twice, Giants have led once, and now we're tied 3-3. One and one on Addison Russell. Last time you were on a seesaw? Um, poof. Uh, probably when my kids were real little, so I'm going to go with 15 years ago. Okay. Yeah, I can't remember the last time I was on one. Figuratively, we're riding one today, I guess. Baseball parlance. Deep left field toward the corner. Fair ball. And Russell's got a double. So two for two, and he just about hit a home run. Two for two, a pair of doubles. And here we go. Change up. Not well placed. Belly button high, inner third. Two doubles for number 22. Fowler, if he tries to bunt, he'll likely try to bunt for a hit. Does not show it. And 
His 11th homer of the year late in the ball game yesterday. 2 and 0. Oh. Seen a lot of that from Kane today when he's trying to throw his changeup to the left handed hitters drops his arm a little bit. And that's a pretty easy pitch for a, a hitter to recognize and lay off of. Three and oh. Good to see Brian Wilson back. The, the lesser known pirate pink beard. Giants cap on. Pitch. It's a strike. Blackbeard's more sensitive, thoughtful brother. Two. Francisco Liriano has hit a three run homer off Matt Latos. And that has given the Pirates a lead. It's four to two in the third. First home run of his career. Kane back in it. Full count on Fowler. Ball four. You mentioned uh, last thing when Kane was struggling that you know they, they haven't gotten innings out of their starters and Bruce Bochy might be patient. And I peered down into their uh, bullpen and nobody was up, but the bullpen catcher was strapping on his shin guard, so he's anticipating a call that never came because they got the double play uh, on the bunt. Uh, so we'll see how long it takes now before they get cranked up. Uh, and sometimes you're right. The manager just goes, especially you've got a veteran guy like Kane, gives him the ball. So here, dude, you got, you got to give me at least six today. I don't care how it's going. I need you to eat up some innings. First two have reached, and Schwarber takes a strike. So Kyle has had at least two RBIs and has scored at least two runs in each of his last three games. Hit by a pitch and a run in the first. He lined out hard two first in the second. One and two. Now this is a pretty big inning, you think, now for Matt Kane, right? Two on, nobody out, and all these lefties do up, and he has had his issues against left-handed hitters yeah. this season. And lefties that are getting their third look at him, and they're only in the fourth inning. The one-two is on the way. It's low and outside on a changeup. Two and two. And because he's had a battle from the outset, it's not like he's got anything in his back pocket. I mean, he's been using all of his pitches. He's had to to, to get this far. In the air, pretty deep but playable. Aoki makes the grab, and both runners have to hold. Russell at second, Fowler at first. And one out for Coglin. Schwarber looking back at Field and Colbert as he ran off the field as if to say, I swung at that pitch because you called that other backdoor cutter a strike. Maybe just looking for some information. Maybe asking feeling was that ball up? Was it out? Hey. One on Coughlin. 
double and a walk to start this inning. A lot of traffic. Kane has not had a one, two, three inning. In fact, uh, five hitters, the fewest he's faced in an inning. Usually means a fairly short day for a starter. Not had command of his slider. He's hit a couple of batters. He missed away a lot with his changeup. So that, you know he doesn't have a, a go-to pitch right now that he can feel comfortable with in a hitter's count. You know, either paint a fastball or throw a good changeup. Aoki again this time moving in toward home plate. He does have some deception, Kane. He always has had that a little bit of that uh, invisible factor with his four seam fastball. A little, you know, even when he's not throwing really hard, uh, a little late life. Bill Rizzo's walked, singled, and scored, helping out his on base percentage. And he's trying to drive in a run or two here in a 3 3 tie. Adrian's it. About 20 feet out on the right field grass. Belt way back at first. Crawford playing up the middle and ball one outside. Kind of a fun moment before the game. Anthony went out at about 2.30 out to take some swings in the cage. And as he was walking out there, they announced on the big board that it was his birthday. And a big group of fans in left field uh, serenaded him with a, a little happy birthday. Russell, the kick and the pitch, it's outside. Did you ever hear about Zutzfong? A what? Zutzfong? I have not. It's a chess term. And I may be butchering the pronunciation of it. <laughs> But it basically means when you're playing chess that you'd be better off not making a move, but you have to. I hear what you're saying. You yeah. can't pass. Yeah, you got to make a move, and no matter what you do, you're, it's going to put you in jeopardy. And that's what. That's kind of what came with with Brian on deck, who's already taking him deep. Rizzo up here hitting. Yeah, we refer to that all the time with, with managers. They have to make decisions sometimes, and they have two or three choices, and none is a good choice. But you have to pick one. Yeah. And then it's the fans job to criticize. <laughs> How can you do that? Yeah, <laughs> Three and two. That's the beauty of it. So Zutzfang pitch coming up right here. Runners will go. With two outs. Here it is. Bounced foul. It's an all Jake matchup here tomorrow afternoon. Arietta for the Cubs, PD for the Giants.
Jones got two tweets. One said you completely butchered how you say that word, and the other one said you nailed it. Yeah. There you go. That's, that's, that's how, what I when I looked it up because I heard it on the radio the other day, and I phonetically, but Zutvang. I'll just keep saying it differently each time, and one of these times I'll get it right. In the hard place. Waiting on a third three two. Here it comes. He got him, and Kane escapes. He gets Schwarber, Coglin, and Rizzo, and the Cubs strand two, and we're still tied. Fifth inning, 3-3. Matt Kane swings at the first pitch and rolls Chris Coglin. And great to have with us from ABC7, Tanya Babich, who actually grew up a Toronto Blue Jays fan, but reporter, contributing anchor at ABC7. Great to have you with us today. Thank you so much, Len. So great to be here. Happy to be with great you to both. Happy you. to be at Wrigley. Um, I lived really close to here when I was in graduate school at Northwestern, and I used to be able to hear the games from my apartment. And uh, yeah, uh, this atmosphere here has been tremendous, and there's such a buzz in the area. And the Cubs are home here for essentially the next three weeks. But you can just feel it when you walk into the ballpark. Absolutely. There's Angel Pagan, one ball, no strikes. So, Blue Jays fan growing up. Yeah. How could you not be? You know, it was the early 90s, back to back World Series champs. And there's your guy. <laughs> there's Pat my Borders. guy. That was my first celebrity crush, catcher Bat Pat Borders. Um, a little embarrassing to admit that now, but you know. Rocking it's a cool. pretty good mullet back in the day. Hey, well, you it? know, it was cool back then. I remember everybody in school had mullets <laughs> or the, the tails <laughs> in the back. Right? <laughs> now, did, you ever, rolled in did you ever go to Exhibition Stadium? Um, or just the uh, Sky Dome slash just, Rogers. Just the Sky Dome. It's you know what? It's kind of like the Sears Tower. You know who really calls it Willis Tower? Now um, I, I'll always call the Sky Dome the Sky Dome. Yeah, we don't go there enough. That's one of our favorite stops. We were there uh, last September. And that ballpark has held up well. Two two on Pagan, and he hits that one on the ground foul. 
a Chicago fan though now, right? Cubs, oh, absolutely, Blackhawks. absolutely. Ever since grad school, I was here in 06, 07. And, uh, you know, I know a thing or two about, about you know, loving teams that, uh, that just haven't made it all the way in a really long time. <laughs> and uh, I got a soft spot for them. So I'm so thrilled, um, you know, to be here, to be in Chicago, period. I mean, what a great sports town to be a part of. Yeah, it really is. And this time of year, Bear, Bears uh, starting up training camp. And the pennant race is heating up. And a great time to be here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And a great time to be on ABC 7 Cubs baseball here in 2015. We're so glad to be to have you guys. Corey Aoki takes ball one. And you've been here how long now? Channel 7? Um, just over a year and a half. By way of Syracuse. Right? By way of Syracuse, New York. I was there for almost seven years. I worked for the ABC affiliate there. Uh, and it was most recently uh, weekday morning anchor. A lot Tanya, of great to have you here. Thank you. Thanks for stopping by. Maybe a Cubs Blue Jays World Series. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? When that happens. 3-3 three, three <laughs> in the fifth. Under Armour All-American game here at Wrigley Field. Your first chance to catch the country's best high school baseball players. And Ryan Dempster will sign autographs from three to four from inside the ballpark. Get free tickets while they last. Available in person at the Cubs store on Clark and Addison through Friday, August 14th. Limit six tickets per person. No purchase necessary. For more information, visit Cubs.com. Bryant bounces foul. The two run blast to give the Cubs a short lived lead before the Giants came back to tie it in the next half inning. It's not deterred, but it's tree tree. Thank you, Pat Foley. First one in a while for Chris. Inner half breaking ball. Beautiful swing. Better missed outside. Two two. So oh 
two to three two. Not uncommon with Chris Bryant in the box. He walked him. Manager will love that. It's a fifth walk given up today by Matt Kane. Uh, I've got a real good question here from Bob on Twitter. Do pitchers hate batters who crowd the plate? Does it matter? Uh, and we have referenced Anthony Rizzo a lot this year. The fact that he stands right on top of the plate. Did that yes. bother you? Yes, absolutely. You know, you look in there and you're used to having a certain perspective. Most guys are kind of roughly in the same area in terms of their positioning relative to home plate. And when you see a guy that's drastically different, it throws you off a little bit, whether he's way off or way on. Swing and a miss. And, and two thoughts cross your mind. So what does this guy know or what is he thinking that nobody else is? And, and, so, and how do I attack him? And in the case of Rizzo, we've talked about it a lot. He's right on top of home plate. Basically takes away the outside corner. The outside corner pitch to Anthony is a very get toable pitch. So now you're forced to come inside. You run the risk of hitting him and giving up the base runner. So you know to pitch to Anthony, you have to be more thinking in terms of I got to go high and low. You know, in and out is not as good an option. So I now got to try to get him to chase high fastballs, low breaking balls. So it's a big advantage for Anthony, uh, but you know, but he's putting himself in harm's way too by doing it. That's yeah. obviously the downside. He gets hit a lot. We just hope he doesn't suffer an injury that forces him out of action for a while. Two and two as he fouls it upstairs. Take on the curve. Yeah, we saw him work a walk last time, laid off a 3 2 breaking ball out of the zone. He's calm things down a little bit in the box here lately. He's had a number of multi hit games. He's 10 out of his last 25. He was 10 out of 25 prior to today. Seven game hit streak. And thumped in the left. So for the second straight inning, the Cubs have two on and nobody out. Kane was able to wiggle off the hook in the fourth. Yeah, Against okay. the toughest part of the order. Now it'll be Montero, Hendricks, Russell due up. He's like a boxer who's taken a pretty good jolt in each round and he's managed to stay in the fight, but he's about to come out of the fight. Be Chicago area native George Contos to face Miguel Montero as the Cubs threaten to grab the lead again. 3 3 in the fifth.
NFC 7 is brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. George Contos trots out there with a 1.90 earned run average. 52 innings, he's allowed uh, just 40 hits. 209 bounding average against, four strikeouts for every walk. Two thirds of an inning scoreless here on Thursday. George went to Niles West High School in nearby Skokie and then on to Northwestern. For four seamers, two seamers, cut fastballs, slider and a change. Riot, the runner at second, Solaire's at first. Walk single to knock Kane out of the game. Swing and a miss. Another giant starter only going four innings. It's three in a row to start this series. Talking to Miggy today, asking him about his thumb. I said, How you doing? He said, Good enough. Said earlier that he probably wouldn't be 100% until the offseason. Left on the top hand thumb for him. And the catching hand. Yeah, and I think that's where it was bothering him more. The catching part of it than swinging the bat. One ball, two strikes. Now even. And Joe Madden has said that he's going to continue to get uh, Kyle Schwarber some time behind home plate. So back to the three three catcher situation that they had earlier in the year only instead of Wellington Castillo it's now Kyle Schwarber. That'll get in there. Bryant will score. Solaire on his way to third. Miguel Montero makes it four to three. Now nice to come back off the DL and have an impact. Good at bats today for Montero. Lined out first time up, worked the walk, and now an RBI single. Backdoor breaker didn't do a whole lot. Until Montero got on the back side of it. Still nobody out. Usually a safety squeeze situation for the pitcher. First and third. And he fouls it. And, and I think with nobody out, safety at a premium for Solaire down there at third base. With one out, you, you maybe take a more aggressive approach. Kyle tried to bunt last time up and ended up bunting into a double play. Crawford will step on second. Cubs will get a run. No RBI for Hendricks. 
as he bounces into the 6 3 double play, but it is 5 to 3 now. Well, punt turned into a double play, turned him loose, let him swing. That turned into a double play. Which runs charged to Kane, so he gave up five. Bit of a zoopswong, zoopswong for Hendricks. <laughs> he was bound and determined to get that thing in there as many times as possible. I like it. And Zuzu's pedals is next. <laughs> so Russell could keep his day going. Two doubles and two trips so far. Pence is in. And that's the inning. Oops, grab the lead again with two runs, and it's five to three. Cubs looking for their third straight win to start this series. One strike on Matt Duffy. And one and one. Well, this is an important inning for Hendricks now working with a two run lead six inning middle of the order. Travis Wood is warming in the Cubs bullpen. So there is over and that ball hit the ledge. It's been a pitcher friendly ballpark here this year with the wind blowing in as much as it has but still hitter friendly in that uh, there's a limited foul territory. Travis Wood up in the bullpen.
Oh, nice grab. Let's take a look at the uh, ESPN 1000 game summary. Brandon Belt has gone deep for the second time in this series. Giant starters continue to struggle. If just four innings in each of the first three games. And Chris Bryant snaps a homeless drought. Coughlin to Rizzo, and they get Duffy. The ever dangerous Buster Posey came in hitting 421 his last 34 games. On cue, he laces one in the left. Just not a whole lot of let up in this lineup. You know, most lineups you face, you look, well, you know, really, you know, maybe they got a table setter at the top, maybe they don't. The, Dangerous guys in the middle, but most National League clubs you see a pretty significant softening as you get towards the bottom of the order. Not so much with this group. All one to Pence. Been on twice and has scored both times. See, I would have called that a strike. Because it was almost a swing and it was awfully close. Combination is good enough for me. Right. Maybe he didn't quite swing. Maybe it wasn't quite a strike, but you add it up and it's enough. It's enough. It sounds like a pitcher talking. Two and one. Wood is ready if needed. And you've got belt. And Crawford do after Pence. So we'll see how Joe wants to play it. Pitch count in good shape for Hendricks. 82 and counting. Here it is. It's a strike. Two and two. Now we saw with Joe with an early move to the bullpen um, two nights ago. Uh, Jason Hamill, after a couple of walks, was removed in the fourth inning. He had allowed just two runs. I think Joe's really good at identifying those times in the game where it might pivot, and I think he's. You know, this, this is what he's considering here. Line in the left. How about Pence? He just almost threw the bat at that ball. And uh, trouble here with two on for Belt, who's already homered today, and it looks like that will be it for yeah. Kyle Hendricks. I think anything but a double play ball, and Kyle's coming out of the game. I, I think uh, even if he gets Pence. With the left-handed hitters coming up, Joe's likely to make the move. And this, again, it's a good pitch. Hendricks, you know, the numbers ultimately are not going to be really good here today for him. But um, he did what he normally does: change his speeds, kept the ball on the edges, down around the knees, made just a couple of mistakes that he paid for. Still has a chance to be a winning pitcher, but he's going to need a little help from the pen. Nice hand for Hendricks. He'll leave with a 5-3 advantage.
Yeah, very important situation in this ball game. Travis Wood on for the 33rd time. Five up, four down, 458. The ERA, the ERA has been climbing here of late. It's allowed runs in the four of his last seven appearances, including last time out. Uh, the finale over in Pittsburgh, he allowed uh, two runs in a third of an inning. Gave up back to back to back singles. It's a strike. Good start. Tight little cutter right over the outside corner. Two homers already in the series for Belt. Belt against lefties. 211 batting average. Two home runs. Outside for a ball. One and two. Posey at second, Pence at first. Try just wide. Ninety two slid off that outside corner, not as close as I thought. They got him. Ninety three on the fastball. Swinging strike three. Hey, the 90s are coming back for at least one afternoon as the Cubs host 90s Day, August 21st, against the Braves. Budweiser Bleacher fans 21 and older receive a reissue neon Cubs hat in one of two popular colors. The game will feature sounds of the decade with popular 90s music played between innings and much more. For tickets, visit Cubs.com. Isn't that an oxymoron? Popular 90s music. Send your tweets to at <laughs> Jim Deshays. One and all. Spoken like a true old guy. Uh, there was some good stuff. And there was some bad stuff. Javier Lopez, veteran left hander up in the Giants pen. Crawford bounces fair. It takes Rizzo into foul ground. Wood covering, inning over. Nicely done by Travis Wood as he helps out Kyle Hendricks. Bottom of the sixth, five to three Cubs.
7 is brought to you by U.S. Waterproofing. Rely on the experts at U.S. Waterproofing. They've been helping Chicagoland homeowners since 1957. Uh, visit cpage.com or call or seepage. Ah, 888 seepage. I like seepage better. For a free consultation, U.S. Waterproofing, a better basement starts with us. That's beautiful. I should probably proofread before I do that. This is a uh, PFT. Perfectly executed. Pitcher's fielding practice. Ground ball to the right side. Aggressive route to the bag. More importantly, two very important outs recorded by Woody. 1 0 on Dexter Fowler. David Putty in the house. El Diablo. Up left field. Crawford the shortstop. Makes the catch. By the way, Grunge fans, not real happy with you right now. I'm, I'm my heartfelt apologies to, <laughs> to the Grunge community. Yes. <laughs> That's just one of those throwaway lines you can I pick know, on any decade know, of music. I defend the 80s. Yeah. The rag on the yeah. 80s. There's a lot of good music. Not all of it was popular. You know, there's some of us that feel like music ended uh, when uh, after a Billy Don't Be a Hero. I mean, once once you got that one out of the way, music was never going to be the same. Battle back by Schwarber. He wants a change up here. He was in a pretty good spot, but Schwarber said, nah, don't think so. One on one. Four plus. You have six hits, five runs. He walked five. A lot of base runners. Hit a couple of batters. Hendricks went five and a third. He gave up five hits and three runs. Walked two, struck out five, and a lot of home runs. Talking it over with Mike Borzello. Warber held. Borzello's got to love Kyle Hendricks. Mike does a lot of grinding, preparing reports on hitters' strengths and weaknesses, and Hendricks, a guy who can really implement it. Swing that time and just got a piece of it. It's full three and two. I imagine Contos has a lot of friends and family at the ballpark this weekend. In his hometown. Ground ball through the shift. Solid single for Schwarber. One out of three now today. Birthday wishes go out to Big Cup fan Melvin Santiago. I 
I got to be. I'm disappointed in you, partner. How's that? Well, the master of the Seinfeld references failed to wish Wayne Knight a happy 60th. <laughs> yesterday. Wayne Newman's birthday? Yeah, yesterday. Oh yeah. man. I bet you Dan Heron knew that. <laughs> Big Seinfeld fan. It's the new Memmingham. Coughlin's been an important part of this team all year long, but even more so now with the versatility and Joe Madden deciding to go with Addison Russell at shortstop. I mean, Lestella continues to work his way back from that oblique injury. We may see him soon. Javi Baez has been on a nice run down in Iowa. We may see him. The problem is there's only so many it. roster spots. <laughs> well, yeah, once we obviously get to September, that that helps, but th there's good depth at the top of this organization. It's good to have guys pushing for playing time. Warber at first, a 1 2 count, and there goes the runner. Pitches a ball, the throw got him. It was on the shortstop side, but Crawford with an Addison Russell like tag. So Crawford helping out his catcher, Posey. Schwarber thinks he's safe, so he's going to hang there until Joe makes a decision yeah. on a possible review here. Yeah, let's, let's, see. See. let's see. Oof, man, that's tough. Heck of a play by Crawford. Like Russell yesterday, very athletic, reaching back across his body to get the ball and able to spin and apply the tag. Joe will challenge. And I, I'm guessing this is a 50-50 challenge in that we're in the sixth inning. I think it's probably going to stand, but it's worth it. Why not? Yeah. Reacting to the video here in the ballpark, thinking that Schwarber was safe. Well, part of the problem is, you know, the tag appears to be applied after the foot hits the bag, but is the leather touching the pant leg before it gets there? Well, and the other piece of the play is, too, there's a, a brief period where he kind of pops up a little bit over the base, and Crawford keeps the tag on. So even if they rule that initially he beat the throw, they may, uh, you know, say that he was. He was able to hold the tag while Kyle pops up. So right there, you can't tell his. Now, there's a brief mini yeah. second there, right where the before the back leg gains yep. contact to the base. So tough. And the reason this is a 50-50. Kind of no brainer for Joe is once you get past the sixth inning, understand that even without a challenge, you can request it. 
and leave it up to the crew chief. Now they don't have to review, but in most cases, especially in big spots, they are going to go to review. So I think you know most managers when it comes to replay, they treat the sixth inning like it's the ninth when it comes to yeah. yeah. If you have a challenge, use it. Use it. And You'd rather use it than have it in your back pocket when the game ends. Yeah, really grinding in New York. It's been a few minutes. Yeah, I'd also would be in favor if you couldn't find a definitive look within a certain time frame, then the call stands. Which after the long delay of multiple looks, it does indeed stand. Again, I think that's a good challenge. You never know that they might overturn it. They didn't. So Joe is out of challenges. But again, once we get into the seventh, the rules change. Two two on Coglin. Base is cleared. And he hits a ground ball right to the second baseman. That's Adrianza. And the inning is over. Rick Sutcliffe will join us in the seventh. Five three Cubs. Runs on Duncan. Jonathan Herrera is in for Chris Coglin to play second base. And Rick Sutcliffe is with us. He's going to sing the stretch today. Sut, how are you? <laughs> in good voice? Yeah, yeah. I'm okay. I love sitting with two of my favorite people here, but uh, that, that singing thing, I'm, I'm telling you, I, Jimmy, I never got that nervous taking the mound here at Rick. <laughs> I'm um, with you. I'm with you, man. You just don't know what's, what's going to come out. Well, you've done it a lot. You'll be, and you know, everybody here is going to help you. You know, I'll never forget the first year when, when John McDonough called. And he said, we have these thoughts where, you know, we're going to honor Harry. We're going to bring back former players and celebrities. And, you know, we'd like for you to do it. And, you know, I said, John, I got I to get back to you on this one. And I had no intention of ever calling him back to do it until we heard Mike Ditka. 
<laughs> and so the bar had been set, and you go, I can get over that bar. I can get over that. <laughs> That's exactly right. That was a game changer, yep. One and two on the switch hitting. The coach doesn't realize how much he, how he freed people up. Brianza a foul, still one and two. What I remember. Atmosphere. What a weekend. It's been fun. You know, Lenny, I got just thinking about you guys in the last couple of years, and, you know, you showing that fan cam and the shots and everything, and how your camera guys the last few years had to be creative to find a section in the ballpark where there were people sitting. And, I mean, now, once again, like, uh, like we've had before, uh, this is the place to be. A foul. Well, the other thing. We talked about earlier the Cubs have knocked the Giants starting pitcher out of the game after four innings each day and in a four game series that does put a toll on the Giants bullpen. You know Bruce Bochy wanted Matt Cain to go a lot deeper than he was able to in this ball game. I um, I had dinner with with Bruce Bochy last night as you guys know I've been I've been with friends with him for a long time we live in San Diego together our, our families are close and. You know, I was asking him if he had a you know bonus in his contract for how many times he went to the mound. And, you know, do you get paid extra for the double switches that, that you're out there doing? And he wasn't real happy about that. But. They've got a good club. You know, the starting pitching might be the key if they can kind of patch you know, it together they, after Bumgarner. They need to get Mike Leak back. I mean, that, that's a big blow to make that deal for him, and he's made one start. Hit well out into the left center. Schwarber, however, will get there. I got to tell you, I, I think, and I'm going to ask you, Jimmy, this. I think offensively, the team that they have now is better than any team that they've had that won the World Series. Yeah, over we've the last been, five we've years. been talking about the, the depth of the lineup. You know, if you've got Belt and Crawford hitting six and seven in your batting order um, with a right-handed starter on the mound, I mean that's that's pretty deep lineup. Justin Maxwell will pinch hit, and as JD mentioned. Kyle Hendricks, you look at his day today, five and a third, he gave up three runs, but thought he was pretty good. I totally agree with you. I, I thought a couple of calls didn't go his way that probably should have, that might have been the only reason he's not still out there. Swing and a miss. Yeah, the 3 2 uh, pitch to Pence. He walked just before the belt home run. Good looking pitch. That's right. But, the, but it, you know, he didn't he didn't make many mistakes over the plate. Uh, this is the kind of club that'll exploit that. They'll take advantage of it when you do. It was funny. I was sitting there with Theo when he made that pitch, and Theo has he's got all these apps right on his phone, and immediately he hit this app, and the strike zone comes up, and it shows where the ball. <laughs> oh yeah. And, and of course, you know, he loses his mind for a moment there. It's a strike. Probably won't be allowed back in his box after giving away some of this info, but it's what we do, Lenny. Yeah. Well, we, I mean, our fans get get to look at it. Um, we have pitch tracks, and I know on ESPN, you guys are able to show where every pitch landed according to what the strike zone theoretically is. I think that's something too that the, the fans enjoy, and. Um, you know we're we're always evaluated by our performance, and I think it's kind of a way to explain what what kind of a day the home plate umpires mm -hmm. had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and the, the, the pitches we're talking about, you know, they weren't egregious calls. The ball wasn't right down the middle; it was right on the edge. You know, so to be fair to the umpire, the pitch we're talking about was a borderline pitch. Um, and so I think you know, by, and we, you know, everybody that does what we do makes a point frequently over the course of the summer. These guys are really good at what they do, yes. but they have bad days, and sometimes it can really you know, hurt, hurt, hurt one club more so than the other. I think the replay now that's instituted, we see so many plays where we'll watch five, six, seven re replays, and we still don't know the answer. Or we look at it and go, man, he looked safe, but he got it right. He was out. It was interesting. I was on, of course, with, with Pat and Ronnie uh, on the play when Schwarber slid in. And I, I honestly, after all the reviews that we've seen, I felt like if he'd have been called safe, I don't think they would have overturned that either. I agree with you. But so much credit to Crawford for not only getting to the ball, but how he continued to keep the tag on. Because 
keeping the tag on is when Schwarber's foot hit the bag. You saw it and it came up. And for that split second, the glove was on him with the ball in it, and he wasn't touching the bag. I'm a big fan of the review. I, I, I think yeah, like right. everything else, exactly. We have the technology to do it. Um, I think everything else is, is, is uh, you know, it's like everything else. We're, it's got to be tweaked a little bit. There's still some things that, that need to happen. There was a pitch to Pence earlier that Hendricks thought was a strike. Right on, the, on that line, on the pitch tracks, so there's a strike on Pagan. So, uh, what would Rick Sutcliffe, the pitcher, have done once they banned the fake to third throw to first move? <laughs> How many of those did you average per start? Oh, my God. Probably one a game. <laughs> I, I, I tend to have a lot of traffic out there, Lenny. <laughs> I know the happiest guy on earth would have been Harry Carey. He, he did not care for that thing at all. But, you know, for me, I, I like to have that high leg kick. And, Jimmy, it was a lot of times to me it worked when it didn't. Exactly. It just kept the runner at Holy first hell. from taking off on me. And. And I could I could I could make a little better delivery than, than what I would have had to if I had to rush it. Two strikes to Pagan. That was kind of mean of him to bring that up. But that's that. the thing, right? Oh, you used it to your advantage because it was allowed. I have no problem. But that wasn't that wasn't the tone of voice <laughs> that he used when when <laughs> <laughs> Master of the fake to third over the first move. <laughs> but you're right. The, the, the people say, oh, it never works. Well, it did work because it would, it, guys would have to hesitate just a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you're living proof that it did work because if it didn't, you wouldn't have done it. Yeah. yeah. Here's a, you know, I, the one thing I, I was talking with Joe Madden before the game about that you watch the Giants and, and you can see why they're the World Series champions. You can see why they've won in the past. I mean, they're never out of it. As bad as this game has gone for them and the problems with the bullpen, I mean, they continue to battle. You look at the game yesterday and, and, and the game on Thursday. I know that our young guys are learning from watching this. Pagan stays alive. Still two and two. Justin Grimm cranking it up in the Cubs bullpen. And how much fun would a playoff series be between these two clubs with the vibe in this ballpark and, and out at AT&T Park? It's back here, isn't it? Mm, big time. I mean, it is back. And, and it's not just during the game or when the game starts. It's when those gates open. You just, you feel it. You can hear it. You know, it's just the excitement that people are, are, are coming to the ballpark with now that you, know, you guys know better than anybody that, that just hasn't been here for a while. Well, the runner at first, 2 2 on Pagan. Run it full. Aoki next. Aoki still leading all of baseball and batting average on the road. He's been unbelievable. He came in with an on-base percentage on the road of 444. Big time difference in his splits. Aoki. Well, they're not going. 3-2 has popped up. Herrera will take it right near the bag. Two outs. Addison Russell's 21 years old. The athleticism's off the charts. And we've seen a lot of improvement at the plate. Uh, I get asked all the time. I know JD does. Who's going to be the best of the bunch? I mean, well, nobody really knows who's going to be the best hitter, the best whatever. But Addison Russell is going to be a very, and already is a very good baseball player. He may be a great one before it's all said and done. I don't know that he'll put up the, the power numbers that Schwarber and, and and Chris Bryant, maybe even Rizzo, put up. But you're exactly right. He's a he's a plus plus defender, particularly when you let him play his natural position where he's at now. Oh boy. This one popped up. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Wish me luck. Go get Good him. luck. Herrera with the catch. Mercedes Benz seventh inning stretch with Rick Sutcliffe. Today's guest conductor for Take Me Out to the Ball Game, former Cup great Rick Sutcliffe. 
Sweet Home Chicago. Here we go. A one, a two, a three. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some. The annual clearance event is going on now. Visit your local Toyota dealer today or buy a Toyota.com to learn more. Toyota, let's go places. Hey, I didn't Ron Burgundy that one. It was Anthony Rizzo. Cubs leading by two. And it's Hunter Strickland to pitch. Hard throwing right hander. He has pitched uh, 31 times and he's got a 178 ERA. Big sturdy guy. I fly to right over toward the foul line. It's Pence. Well, you know, Hunters wear orange. That's the case for Pence and Strickland today. Pence looks like he could be on the woods. Sitting in a tree stand somewhere out in a duck blind. Pedro Strope getting ready for the eighth. Chris Bryant's skill set has been on display today. The Mercedes drive of the game. His two run home run in the third. Speed beat out a double play in the first. A run scored. Got an RBI because of it. Power with the home run and then the patience working the leadoff walk in the fifth and came around to score on that occasion as well. Ninety eight. And a fast ball from Strickland. Swing and a miss, strike three. Two 
timeouts here in the seventh. And as Michael on Twitter reminds us, and he's right, shotgun season you wear an orange. You camouflage when you're bow hunting. I went hunting with my dad one time. Mm -hmm. How'd it go? It went well. He he actually did shoot a deer, and uh, that was it for me. I'm, <laughs> I was like 11. I'm like, I, I'm, that's not my bag. Missed high. You don't strike yeah. me as. I grew up in an area where there's right. a lot of hunting, but I, I was yeah I wasn't a, wasn't a hunter. I am a gatherer. <laughs> I'm more of a I'm, gatherer yeah. than a hunter. That's a, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. You need groceries. I'm, a I'm your consumer. <laughs> <laughs> Fouled away. One of the challenges for John Maley with all these young hitters is, is you know, when to put new ideas in their heads, when to when to push, when to back off. And I think with, with Soler, with his strength, you know, he's a guy that they project is going to hit the ball out of the ballpark a fair bit. He hasn't done it this year, and I'm sure John's got some ideas about tweaking his swing a little bit to try to generate a little more lift. Um, but you have to be careful. You don't want to make a young guy think too much. Impressive inning from Hunter Strickland as the Cubs go in order, but they lead this one by two. Join the Cubs Tuesday, September 1st for their annual Health Care Professionals Night. Purchase your tickets through the Cubs special events page, and each participant will get a special Cubs scrub top. Visit Cubs.com slash special events. Kristen Norphy now in for Solaire in right. And Pedro Strope will do the pitching. Solaire made the last out, so... An easy double switch.
Ball one on Matt Duffy. This will not be easy. Cubs are up two, but reference to this tough lineup. Posey on deck, then Pence, and then the lefties. And for that reason, James Russell is getting loose. And on the ground to Bryant. It's a 5 3 out number one. Good start for Stroke and Travis Wood. Boy, if the Cubs hang on and win this one, he did a heck of a job here working out of that sixth inning situation. One and two thirds scoreless for Travis here this afternoon. Slider in there on Posey. Quick pitch. One and one. A win today would make it nine out of ten. When you think about a couple of weekends ago here at Wrigley Field, the Cubs got swept by the, the hot, but the team with the worst record in baseball, the Phillies. A lot has changed since. And it's the nature of the game that we, you know, we try to make or tend to make bold proclamations, you know, after that sweep at the hands of the Phillies, everybody worked up. That's the Cubs. Win three out of four here or sweep this weekend series. People will be talking about it being a statement made by the Cubs. I don't know if it's a statement. It's a good weekend. Posey, I think, thought he got a piece of it. He did not and did not even make a move toward first. So that's strike three and uh, two outs. Failed to mention this with uh, Sut in the booth. Uh, we've talked about it with him many times in the past. Uh, 8888 was the first scheduled night game in Wrigley Field history. That game, of course, was rained out ultimately. And the lights have been on since we started today, just after 3 o'clock. Pence takes a bullet right down the middle. 96 for a strike. And after that Philly sweep, the Cubs took two of three from the Rockies. Four game sweep at Milwaukee. Split the rain short and two game set at Pittsburgh, and they're trying to win their third straight against the Giants today. Swing and a miss. To end the inning. Stroke goes one, two, three in the eighth.
Fitness News. Weeknights at 10. Ron Majors, Kathy Brock, Cheryl Burton, Jerry Taft, Mark Jean Greco. Santiago Casilla to Miguel Montero's had a fine return from the DL. As part of that core four out there in the giant bullpen. It's been around for all three World Series. 27 saves this year. Pitching today with his team down a couple. Taro first day back in a while off the DL uh, first game since July 11th. He's had a good day. Line out walk RBI single. Out back. 41,305 packed into Wrigley Field today. See, he's got good movement on his two seam fastball. There's a lot of curveballs, sliders, and a one trick pony. Yes. I'm going to try to verify it here. My good friends at Fangraphs say that's no fun. That uh, the Giants bullpen probably in terms of average velocity, I would put them at or near the bottom of the league. And in terms of age, I was going to say probably the oldest. Montero draws a leadoff walk. Uh, you've got Casilla, who's 35. Got Javier Lopez, who's 38. Jeremy Athel's 36. We've got some finesse guys out there, and obviously guys that know how to pitch. And indeed, yeah, they are. According to Fangraphs, average velocity for giant relievers 90.9 miles per hour. Sergio Romo's 32. Those are the core four guys. Yep. A lot of mileage, but a lot of big game experience for this bullpen. The 0 1 to DeNorfia is low. Yeah, and it doesn't mean they don't have good fastball. You see Casilla there, 93, with really good movement. So if you have movement and you locate it, you can be successful. And frankly, I think a lot of times that guy is more dependable than the guy's blowing it in 97, but not sure where it's going. Duffy throws to first to get to Northia. Montero now at second with one out. And Russell. Two doubles and a fly to right. Tap foul on the ground. Jake Peavy, Jake Arietta tomorrow. Off day Monday. And then the Brewers come in for three. Montero hustling around third. Pagan overruns the ball. Russell on his way to second. The throw there is late. And it's six to three. Third hit of the day for Addison Russell. It's an RBI single. EA allows Russell 
to get into scoring position. Just flips it out there off the end of the bat. Montero with a good break. Pagan in his haste forgets to pick up the ball. And that's the way to play the game. At times this year, we've seen Addison make assumptions going down the first baseline and get caught, maybe not taking advantage of an opportunity to take an extra base. But well done there. Second career three hit game. The first one was on May 26th here against the Nationals. And a swinging strike on Dexter Fowler. Looks like James Russell will at least start the ninth. With the belt and Crawford due to start things for the Giants. How about our fourth upcoming schedule? Again, if the Cubs hang on to this one, a chance for their second consecutive four game sweep in a weekend series. And then off Monday. Brewers and Cubs three games starting Tuesday night. Well, that guy would prefer no lights, but it's okay. And that one rifled in the right. It's going to roll for a while. Fowler may have three here as Russell scores. Dexter on his way to third, and he'll stand there with a three bagger. From Casilla and Fowler goes out and just hooks this one into the right field corner. And so doing, we'll send Casilla to the shower. Third time Dexter has been on base this afternoon. Pitching change here in the eighth. Two runs in. Cubs lead by four. And we'll be right back.
One for streaming live sports. Watch every out of market game live or on demand in true HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Cubs have now scored 19 runs in the first three games of this series. Pressing for more here in the bottom of the eighth. Veteran Javier Lopez. On for the 54th time, uh, left handed specialist, drop down delivery. <laughs> Typically, everything down around the knees and below gets a lot of ground balls. Big field in, Schwarber swings and misses. Six four two twenty, Javier Alfonso Lopez, born in Puerto Rico, went to high school in Fairfax, Virginia, and then the University of Virginia. Inside, seven hundred forty-eight career major league appearances, and none as a starter. In fact, you add up his games and then innings pitched under 500 innings and almost 750 appearances. So that tells you a lot about how he's been used. Left-handed batters hitting 115 against him this year. Seven hits and 61 at bats. No home runs. He hasn't allowed a home run at all this year. It's not like righties are wearing him out. They hit a buck 43 off of him. Yeah, in his career, it, it's pretty stark. A thousand plate appearances against lefties, almost a thousand versus righties. And you had about 90 points on your batting average if you hit right handed against him. Yeah, last year it was more typical of what you would expect with a with guy with that drop down delivery. The lefties at 194, but righties hit 271. I'm not sure why he's been so effective against righties this year. Might just be sample size stuff. He hasn't faced a bunch of them. Thought he had him. Three and two. Be wrong, but it, it, it sure looks like Kyle's got a little bit of a different approach here. He's not only facing a tough lefty, but he's got a runner at third with one out. This is not one of those at bats where you just go up there looking to hit a ball 800 feet. Contact is paramount. Base hit right field. Well, that short stroke. Thing of beauty. They busted it open with three in the eighth. And now lead it eight to three. Uh, you talked about that quick pass, short stroke. For Casilla, he only got one out and was charged with three runs. Jonathan Herrera. Folks down behind the on deck circle serenading Rizzo with another rendition of Happy Birthday.
Yeah. It's so kind of fun. Born on August 8th. Tied for fourth all time in All-Star games made with Jose Cruz. <laughs> he was born on August 8th. That's why Baseball Reference is the greatest website ever. In case you were wondering. And we believe he's tied for the current youngest active player born on August 8th. Ron Karkovice was born on this date. Mike Ivey. Rolled to third. They get one and two around the horn. Five to four to three. Do you have anything to add? To no, I just want to see Anthony get one more AB on his birthday. I'm a little disappointed. A win would have to do, I guess. Eight to three. Meteorologist Jerry Taft and meteorologist Cheryl Scott, only on ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Here's James Russell. Got the dangerous lefties to contend with. What a comfortable lead. 270 the ERA for Russell. Pitch to Brandon Belt. Misses. Ball one. Celebrating Rizzo's birthday. Fly ball at center. Fowler right in front of Schwarber. Mott ready just in case. Not sure if Joe will. Do the platoon thing, although Adrianza after Crawford is a switch hitter. But with a five run lead, he may just yeah, give I'm, Russell I'm, a chance I'm, to finish. I would tell Mott just to nice and easy now. Don't overextend yourself. That's the beauty of those add on runs late and save some bullets out there in the bullpen. I'm not sure about Rondon's status for tomorrow after a lengthy outing yesterday. Called to right one on Crawford. A 
Lefty to lefty. One and one. It's a really good hair matchup right here. Crutching the numbers over at fan graphs on that particular <laughs> topic. <laughs> Ground ball in the right center. <laughs> now Adrianza batting right handed. Got a lot of time here as of late in for Joe Panic. On the DL. Russell play uh, Rizzo rather plays behind the runner. That ball over a leaping Bryant and into the left field corner. Crawford to third. Roberto Kelly's going to send him. And he will score without a throw. It's a double for Adrianza, and it's eight to four. Giants not going to go quietly here. Joe Madden looks like he's going to make a move. Yeah, he's going to go to Mott. So that's it for Russell. Kelby Tomlinson announced. And here comes Jason Mott. We'll be back. The tying run is still in the dugout. And Jason Mott trying to get the final two outs here with a four run lead. Jason worked at the seventh inning on Thursday. Uh, very sharp. Three up, three down with a couple of strikeouts. It's been a bit of a bumpy ride for him over the last 10 outings or so. He's struggled some, but really impressive in that outing. Tomlinson announced and then replaced Gregor Blanco instead. Fastball missing. Andrianza, the runner, bottom of your screen at second. He just knocked in Crawford. Back to back, one out hits. Uh, down four runs with only two outs to play with. Uh, makes sense that Bruce Bochy would be willing to burn a pinch hitter.
2 0. Oh. Don't want to walk him. Giants have to do whatever they can just to keep the line moving. Miguel Montero with a bit of advice for Jason Mott here. Something along the lines of, hey, stay back, get on top. Four run lead. Strike. Fly ball in the center. Fowler's circling. Two outs. Just for good measure, a strong throw to third. And the crowd will stand as Pagan will dig in. Line drive base hit in front of DeNorfia. Run scores eight to five. It had been a tough day for Pagan. 0 for 4 with a couple of strikeouts prior to that swing of the bat. Manager always walks that fine line, whether it's pulling a starter early or making multiple moves to the bullpen uh, between trying to gain an advantage and perhaps conveying a sense of panic. You know, but the bottom line is win, winning trumps all. So I always argue, well, I should have left Russell out there for another hit. So Don takes second. Aoki looks at a strike. I think with, with Mott's recent struggles, and I don't know if this was part of Joe's motivation, but to get him back out there with a comfortable lead, finishing out a ball game, uh, help him get his mojo back. One and one. The tying run is on deck. That's Guppy. One one count and Nori Aoki to pitch. Ground ball base hit. They will bring the tying run up. Pagan is going to score. A three run ninth inning. It's now eight to six. And this will be a safe situation if Joel goes to the pin. He's got Justin Grimm ready. Didn't see this coming. So it's 8 6. Trying to get that elusive 27th out. Here's Grimm. We'll be right back.
going to get his third save. Tying run at the plate, three runs in. Remember, the Cubs scored three in the eighth to add some insurance and much, much needed. The Giants making a lot of noise here in the ninth. Justin Grimm comes into what has all of a sudden become a high leverage situation. So deep breath, calm the nerves. Picked up the win Thursday. Came in with a couple of men on in relief with Jason Hamill and worked out of that jam. Here we go. Good start. Curve strike outside corner. Rizzo is holding on Aoki. Keep that force play in order at second. The kick, the pitch. 0 2. Interesting note. Save recorded in seven of the last eight Cub wins. Four different pitchers recording those saves. Here's the 0 2. 1 and 2. Three consecutive breaking balls. A little bit off the edge. On the ground, Russell will pick it up. Throw to first. Out at first. Cubs win. Cubs win. Just waiting to see if Bruce Bochy wants to challenge. He has not come out of his dugout yet. And... Just hang on a second. Field and Colbert, the home plate umpire, is holding everybody just in case. Now, if there's any doubt at all with what Bochy sees, he'll challenge, but that's it. All game over. Final score, 8 6. How about the dig by Rizzo? Yeah. yeah, he was out by half step. Yep. Nice pick by the birthday boy. Justin Grimm gets his save. So, so a little uh, drama at the end, but the Cubs hang on. They've